autotoxicity. Ear has got two functions. One is hearing, another one is balance. If you see the inner ear, and if I take out the picture of the inner ear alone, it will look like this. The cochlea is concerned with hearing, vestibule the middle part, and semicircular canal the posterior part. These two parts are concerned with balancing. Any medication or drug which affects the function of the ear and resulting in its dysfunction is called as an autotoxic drug and that medication is called as autotoxic and that condition is called as autotoxicity. So let us see the list of autotoxic medications. To start with aminoglycosides followed by antibiotics like erythromycin, clarithromycin, azithromycin and other drugs like frusomide which is commonly used in renal failure patients, anti-malarial drugs, likewise, likewise anti-neoplastic drugs, then uh, anti-convulsants, commonly used drug aspirin, cardiac drugs like beta blockers, oral contraceptives, interferons and there is a lot of long list with that. And the commonly used drugs have mentioned here. So what are the predisposing factors? Renal failure is one, likewise extremes of age in infants and old age. Third one is if you use two autotoxic drugs together concurrently, the side effects can be more. Or if you use autotoxic drugs again and again repeatedly, that then also it can affect the ear. And the last one, if the temperature is high. What are the common presentations? The three main common presentations are, it starts with tinnitus, which can be a buzzing sound or it can be a ringing sound, followed by hearing loss. And if suppose the, the drug, the autotoxic drug affects the middle and the posterior part, the patient can get dizziness also. So these are the three main complaints. If you, if we divide the patient into two, two groups like mild and moderate to severe, two groups, the mild form you will not have any much of findings on examination. But in moderate to severe form when the inner ear is damaged and especially when the patient has got giddiness, what I got dizziness, when he walks in itself we can know that he has got an ear involvement. Coming to the investigation, the investigation is mainly concentrated on hearing, tinnitus and dizziness. To rule out the severity of hearing, we need to do the hearing test that is puton audiometry, auto acoustic, auto -acoustic emission and sometimes we need to do Bera too. And as far as the tinnitus, the sound is concerned, we can know how loud it is and what is the pitch so that accordingly, accordingly we can treat that. And dizziness, we sometimes we need to do video nystagmogram that is called as VNG. Now coming to the treatment part. In a case of mild, mild condition, we need to stop the autotoxic drug and we will advise multivitamin tablets and antioxidants. That will be more than enough for the mild cases. In case of moderate to severe, of course we need to stop the autotoxic drug and suppose we need to continue the medication, we can supplement or replace with a non-autotoxic drug. And we can add a multivitamin uh, medication as well as antioxidants. Along with that, we have to take care of these three things. That is hearing loss, tinnitus and dizziness. So let us see how we are going to manage these three conditions. So in case of hearing loss, which is severe and the patient is complaining that he has got much, which is hampering him, we need to help him with a hearing aid. And in case the hearing aid and he is not able to hear much, it is not helping him much, we can even think about giving him a cochlear implant. But mind, it's a surgical procedure. We have to implant, as the word goes, we have to implant something to help the cochlea to help to transmit these signals to the brain so that the patient can hear better. 
Now, coming to tinnitus. It is really very disturbing, especially when the pitch and the loudness is very high. It will not allow him to work normally in the morning and it will not allow the patient to sleep normally and some of the patients can go into depression too. So, the first thing is, please do not be worried about this. Simple reassurance will take care of this. This is not going to trouble and it is not going to increase. There will be increasing and decreasing stages. So, the sound which is coming from inside, it can be masked by giving a pleasant sound which is given from outside. Say like when you are in a room, when you use an old fan which makes some sound or old AC which makes some sound. These sounds are more pleasant than the sound which is coming from inside. This is called as masking. In case the patient has got a hearing loss, significant hearing loss, as well as this sound which is coming from inside, we can give tinnitus maskers uh, that is incorporated in the hearing aid. That is about tinnitus. Now coming to dizziness, in a case, in mild case, when you stop the medication, this will disappear at the earliest and he will come back to normal. But in the case of moderate to severe and the drug has really affected the middle part and the posterior part of the ear, the, of the inner ear, the brain tries to compensate and by doing some vestibular exercises, we can help the brain to compensate early and better. But we need to do, we need to take some precautions at home, which I will tell you shortly. Before that, let me tell you that there are some conditions, say like cancer treatment, where we need to give a combination of 2-3 medications and one drug happened to be an antotoxic drug. In cancer therapy, when there is a combination of medication and one drug may be autotoxic. So, before starting the medication, the hospital will have a protocol saying that we have to do a baseline hearing examination and a hearing test. Likewise, this hearing test will go on as and when you, you, you be when you are taking the treatment. And we will repeat the hearing test even after stopping the treatment. That is 3 months after stopping the cessation of the, of the treatment and 6 months later on also. Now, coming back to the earlier uh, topic which I have told you, the take home message, what has to be given importance. Like, I have told you there are three things, one is hearing loss, another one is tinnitus, third one is dizziness. Hearing loss we have taken care of, tinnitus I have already explained, dizziness and we are, we are trying to manage with exercise. There are few things which, have, which you have to be careful at home. Patients or all, we all depend on all the sensations. So, hearing is one, vision is second, skin sensations is third, likewise. So, when one sensation is gone, the patient will be depending on other sensations more. So, the patient will be depending on vision importantly. At night, when you sleep, it is always better to have a bedroom light and do not make it pitch dark. If by any chance when you happen to get up at night and you have dizziness, there is a high tendency you may fall down. So, try to have a bedroom light or light enough to, so that you can have a look where the objects are. The second point will be try to avoid sudden head movements because this can precipitate dizziness and try to avoid doing any work standing on the ladder because if you get happen to get a dizziness you may fall down. Likewise, do not work near heavy missionaries. When you get dizziness you may fall on top of the missionary and, and there will be a trauma. And one of the sensation is a soul. So, try to wear soft padded shoes or chapals which can help you so that you get that sensation also for extra support. And I have mentioned about that you should have a good vision. So, suppose you have any refractive error or any sort of eye problems, better consult your ophthalmologist and if you have a refractive error, wear a spectacles and if you have any, you are diabetic, you can have get treatment for that, retinal treatment for that and have a good vision so that it helps you as an extra sense. So, this is in short about autotoxicity. Thank you so much.